Rainbows. Yeah, they're cool with their seven colors and all. But let's face it, we're all familiar with them, so it's pretty much like your grandma's famous recipe. Sure, it's amazing, but seriously, grandma, again? Thankfully, nature always finds new ways to surprise us. From a lemon the size of a basketball popping up in your backyard to a tiny fungus sprouting on a clothespin. Actually, those are bug eggs. Gross. Anyway, nature is anything but boring. So buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. You know, some people say that pyrite is supposed to make you rich and rose quartz is all about love and a watermelon tourmaline, well, who cares? Uh, let's be honest. In general, rocks are dull, but on rare occasions, rocks can rock our world. No pun intended. Picture this. You're on the newest How About Survival reality show. It's day one in the middle of nowhere. Your stomach's making some serious noise, and you spot what looks like a juicy piece of steak on the ground. Yum, but nah, it's a rock, and it looks like breaking your teeth is today's special on the menu. Your next survival task throws you into the middle of the desert, and you still haven't found any food. At some point, you spot this. Your vision is a bit blurry, but now you're convinced it's a juicy Big Mac, a huge one. You run towards it, but nope, not a burger, not a mirage. Again, just a rock. And hey, hey, leave that popcorn on the ground, thank you. Yep, when we are hungry, suddenly everything starts looking like food. But on a day-to-day -day basis, our special power is actually seeing faces everywhere. There's even a name for this psychological phenomenon, pareidolia. This quirky tendency is what makes us gaze at this jalapeno and see a T-Rex, grab this random rock and think that it's a Pablo Picasso portrait, and look at this tree and immediately see a, well, never mind. Essentially, pareidolia is your eyes playing tricks on you, attributing meanings to the most random images. But this phenomenon isn't just about finding cute hidden figures in nature. Sure, spotting a heart in a feather can make us go all awww. However, pareidolia can also send shivers down your spine. Take a bell pepper, for example. On the one hand, you can chop it and find a little flamingo. Oh, But on the other hand, ah, oh, what is that? Looks like this bell pepper has snapped. I don't judge. It's just got chopped in half, you see. If you've got a weak heart, brace yourself because that was just the warm-up for the more scary side of nature. Scarily ridiculous, I would say. The first time I saw this photo, it scared the crap out of me. If you're already thinking these are a bunch of shadow monsters from Stranger Things, I'm sorry to disappoint, it's less dramatic than that. These are just leaves, creepy leaves, sure, but leaves. I literally had nightmares the first time I saw this photo. My initial reaction was to picture some weird ritual with more than 10 hanging skulls. So you can imagine my surprise when I did some research and found out that these weird little skulls are, in fact, flowers. Yep, the snapdragon flower turns into this creepy thing when it dries out. Well, I guess this is just a friendly reminder not to forget to water your plants. Nobody wants one of those things in their house, right? Watch out! Our next nature anomaly is after your brains. Clearly, watching The Last of Us before bed yesterday was not a great idea because the only thing I see in this picture is a zombie's foot. It even has all five fingers and a somewhat disproportionate pinky finger. But that's just the Zellaria polymorpha, a bizarre-looking fungus. Oh, wait. Isn't that exactly how The Last of Us plot starts? Oh, my. Let's just move on. What? Is that a giant over there? I guess this hairy monster with those thin, enormous legs is ready to invade the city. Who will save us? Well, actually, anyone with a chainsaw can be a lifesaver here. No, don't call your dad just yet. The knowledge of how to cut down palm trees is also required here. Animals can be surprisingly creepy up close. You might not notice all the weird details at first glance, but if you zoom in and really pay attention... Oh, boy. Take an emu, for instance. It's got a funny face, especially when it opens its mouth. Uh, look at that. Cute, right? But trust me, emus can get kind of creepy. Seriously, don't zoom in on an emu's legs. See? I warned you. Those things look like dragon scales. How weird is that? 
Or maybe this emu just needs a good moisturizer, I don't know. The pink pads, the fluffy fur, those tiny nails. There's just something oddly relaxing about watching videos of people trimming cat paws. But fingers crossed the groomers don't take off too much fur, otherwise cat paws might end up looking like this. Damn! Is that what their paws really look like without fur? They resemble duck feet, but are even more bizarre, if that's possible. Check out this image and tell me what you see. Stalactites in a cave? A bunch of fungi? Strange underwater plants, maybe? Well, time to zoom out. You were right if you guessed that it's a cow. Yeah, a cow. I would never, in a million years, think the inside of a cow's mouth could look like something out of a horror movie. But yeah, it does. Nature, as organic and spontaneous as it might seem, surprisingly has a lot to do with math. And no, I'm not talking about trying to figure out if this cherry tomato is hiding a sneaky six, or is it a nine? Anyway, by now you've probably seen pics of a nautilus half-shell being associated with the golden ratio. I'm talking about that mathematical constant that loves showing up in nature, especially in those mesmerizing spiral growth patterns. This perfect equation is likely what makes this twirly dandelion so easy on the eye. And this eggplant, oh, absolutely not. This is far from perfection. It's more like the muse behind the poop emoji. We're so used to always seeing spirals and round shapes in nature that square things seem like anomalies. Take this cloud, for instance. Sure, there's probably a smart scientific reason behind this phenomenon, something related to differences in temperature, air pressure, and all that, but I like to imagine that someone took a ruler and decided to make this cloud look perfectly straight, but ended up messing up the edges. I mean, it's a bit chaotic back there, isn't it? Yeah, it totally seems like the intern in charge of designing the sky is a bit distracted today. Someone, please buy them a coffee, as we've just spotted another glitch. In this case, they should have put a piece of cloud right there. Yep, right there. Uh, another hypothesis is that a square-shaped spaceship has just invaded Earth. But I'm sure you have a better guess of what's happened here, so don't forget to share your theory in the comments. So, at the start of this video, I kind of brushed off rainbows, saying they weren't such a big deal. I mean, those classic art-shaped ones are indeed a bit overrated, but seeing a full-circle rainbow is pretty darn impressive. But there's one thing that's actually bugging me about this picture. In this whole rain circle scenario, where the heck is the leprechaun with the pot of gold supposed to be? Oh, there he is. Great, now I can sleep in peace. I'm sure there's been a time, at least once, when you looked up at the sky and thought, what the heck is that? Now, picture this. Someone is casually strolling with their kid, and all of a sudden, the boy points at the sky, screaming. He's terrified by a huge, gigantic, furious... tornado? No, hold on, hold on, it's just a bizarre cloud. Phew! Can't blame the kid for being scared. Admit it, you would be a bit on edge too. You don't even have to look up to find the universe's glitches. Most of the time, they're right under your nose. Time for a grocery run. So much fun, right? I'm betting we'll discover some anomalies in the fruit section. Let's check out the bananas. I think we can all agree that bananas are basically perfect. They've got that bright color and the best packaging ever. No messy hands after eating them. But I wasn't exactly expecting to come across this banana. Maybe we can snag a discount here. Three for the price of one. The manager wasn't into that deal, huh? No biggie. Let's go for this papaya instead. The manager won't even realize that we're actually getting four for the price of one. Though I have to admit, I'm a bit hesitant about eating it. Yeah, let's just leave it right there. Maybe we will get lucky in the next section. Bingo! Here's a pumpkin that looks like a swan. That's perfect, because you don't have to waste time carving it for next Halloween. Just toss on a little black tutu, some dark eyeshadow, and voila! Your pumpkin is now rocking Natalie Portman's black swan look. Oh, you think everything at this supermarket is a bit weird? 
No hard feelings. I'm sure this eggplant and its long nose has scared you. Okay, I totally get it. I guess you can just start planting your own stuff at home. I mean, you can't escape anomalies completely. Check out this carrot, for example. It decided to sprout upside down like it needed a new perspective on life. But believe it or not, it's better to grow a carrot with an identity crisis than to deal with this mutant here. Pay attention to the soda can placed there to give us an idea of how big this monster is. So yeah, it's officially a mutant carrot. And don't even bother explaining how this lettuce grew into a mini Christmas tree. The good news is that you won't have to lug around a heavy pine tree during the holidays. Just slap some Christmas lights onto your lettuce anomaly, ask Alexa to play Jingle Bells, and let the festive laziness begin. Christmas reminds me of cold weather. And cold weather reminds me of winter anomalies. I mean, sure, in the spring you can find things like this bizarre flower. Half pink and half white. Sort of like those pizzas that go half and half when you and your friend can't agree on one flavor. Seriously, just to order the margarita already. And in the fall, you might come across this strange leaf that looks like it's been painted by some tree-hugging artist. But winter... Well, no other season beats winter when we're talking about nature's quirks. I get it. Trudging through knee-deep snow every damn day makes winter a real pain in the ass. But it's only during the coldest time of the year that we get to see things like natural chess pieces, for instance. The only difference here is that you have to wear gloves to checkmate, and you're probably going to get pissed trying to move the pieces. But hey, it's free, right? So... It's a solid gift suggestion for your monster-in-law. Nature plays tricks on us during winter, just like what went down here. Take a look at all those footprints around the lamppost. I bet these tracks are from people who ran away after coming face to face with this snake. But of course, they must have felt ridiculous afterward. I mean, a glove was all it took to protect them from any danger here. But nothing beats the tricky prank that nature decided to pull next. Imagine leaving your house in the dark and coming face to face with this huge ice ghost the size of a person. Brr. I mean, boo. I don't know about you, but I would freeze in my tracks. This house sure looks like it's haunted by an evil Elsa spirit. Let's go inside to get warmer. Yeah, you can grab some blankets from the bedroom and... Oh, damn, is that a cat? Look at the I want your soul stare. Seeing this eerie feline lurking in the shadows and sitting like a creepy adult is just freaking me out. I swear if it crosses its legs, I'm out of here. Check out the shadow on the wall. It's like the cat turns into a little demon after dark with that devilish pair of horns. Creepy. You know that old saying about how to protect yourself from bears? Well... I guess if you have zero chances to face bears daily, you won't know. But that's okay, I'll teach you. It's something like, if it's brown, lie down. If it's black, fight back. If it's a bear in a tree, hope that none of the branches break. Who's a good bear? You are. And you. And you. Oh, we are screwed. Let's get out of here. A bunch of bears hanging around might scare us, but as you saw... They can't bring a tree down. Some trees are tough and always find a way to survive, even if you try to stop them. Yep, they'll ignore your stop sign, not even caring how many cars are going to crash at the intersection. Hey, little dog, if I were you, I'd find another tree to pee on. This one doesn't look like it's playing around. If you take a quick look at this photo, you might initially think the stop sign is hanging on the tree. Or perhaps you're wondering if the oddity in this pic is that the tree trunk is made of aluminum. That would be interesting, but that's not the case. Take a closer look behind the sign. Once again, we've got an empowered tree, and nothing can stop it. Yep, this tree is actually growing inside the sign. This pic should totally be on the cover of a motivational book, no joke. The thing is, nature will always find its way, even if it means taking possession of some of our stuff. Like these muscles that probably couldn't stand walking barefoot anymore, so they took over this shoe. I mean, really took over. 
or this moss-covered Furby that turned every 90s kid's biggest nightmare into reality. At this point, you already know that if nature wants it, nature gets it. So please, tell your dog to call off its hunger strike as soon as possible, because this hairy black mold is taking over all its favorite snacks. Yep, that totally looks like a bush. And no, I'm not talking about that kind of bush, you dirty mind. I was thinking about the black mondo grass. Look it up. But hey, I can't blame you for getting a little carried away with the whole bush situation. Nature's got this cheeky side, letting our imaginations run wild, you know. And some contours seem to have come straight out of a green light district. Picture this. You're on a peaceful garden stroll and bam. A perfectly rounded and voluptuous, hmm, bulge. Actually, I was going for another B word, but I'm sure you get it. You don't need to kick the kids out of the room just yet. I mean, well, maybe you should, because I have no clue what the heck is going on here. Ah, oh, phew, these are just berries. Actually, we should call them booberies, because they even got little berryolas. I could keep going with other puns, but just got attacked by boobies. What's your all-time favorite horror movie? Let me guess. The Blair Witch Project is in your top five. No? Okay, but it got to be at least in your top ten. There's something extra terrifying about seeing that dark forest filmed on handheld cameras. And you don't need a witch's legend for a forest to get even scarier. After all, nature itself has certain anomalies hidden in the jungle that make everything much more eerie. Take this skeleton face, for instance. This tree trunk looks like it is chowing down on the fence, attempting to reclaim its forest territory. Picture this. You set up camp in the White Mountains in Arizona. You're exploring the woods, it's getting dark, and you come across this massive fallen tree. Jeez, it looks like a forest monster with those super strong roots resembling multiple arms. I mean, not strong enough, apparently. This piece of wood looks like it's been possessed by a spooky aura with that strange, white, smoky thing. In reality, it's just a spider web trapping that leaf over there. I said, just a spider web. But thinking about it, I guess that's even more terrifying. I mean, spiders are scary. Take a look at this creepy one. It's creating its own portal to another dimension. Just wait and see. This old tree burl has all these wavy patterns that seem to come straight out of a Van Gogh painting. It's impressive and even beautiful at first sight, but it becomes super strange if you start seeing a bunch of little spooky faces in that pattern. Here's one face, here's another one, and here's one more. Do you know what trypophobia is? It's when people have an aversion or fear of small holes when they're all close together. One theory suggests that we can develop this fear because our brains link groups of holes with dangerous things, like the eyes of a tarantula, for example. That's why looking at this twisted beehive can be seriously disturbing, making some folks feel nauseous and even giving them headaches. And that darker part down there is giving me the creeps. Ugh. If you also felt uneasy, then let me introduce you to this little guy. Hey, don't be fooled by his red mohawk and googly eyes. This dude is the ultimate villain for those with trypophobia. During summer, the acorn woodpecker drills hundreds, even thousands of holes in a tree to stash acorns for their winter feast. Yeah, this birdie is clever. After all, nobody would dare to steal its food after getting close to this weird tree. It's amazing how nature has its own rules, and you don't need to be a biologist to know some of them. Let me give you an example. Trees. One thing we all know since we were little kids is that trees grow upwards, right? Right. But this rule isn't always that obvious, at least not for this rebellious fig tree here, which apparently skipped the manners classes 101. Here's another obvious nature rule that we all know, even if we're not plant experts. Palm trees usually have a straight trunk or a slightly bent one. But, well, it's not quite like that. They can also have a roller coaster trunk. At least this way, the coconuts will have a funny ride when they fall. When we learn how to draw trees at school, we never include the roots, but we can imagine what they look like. You know, roots are like this underground tapestry, 
all tangled up and going everywhere? Yeah. We can picture that whole messy underground scenario, and that definitely doesn't look like this freaky situation. Square roots on the sidewalk, seriously. That ended up looking just like that old 3D pipe screensaver. You know, the way we used to trip back in the 90s. Camouflage is like nature's way of helping creatures sneak around, making them blend in with their surroundings. Long story short, it is a defense mechanism, and chameleons are the OGs in this hide-and-seek game. But the next images show that fruits and veggies can also play camouflage themselves, even though no one really knows what their end game is. Take this pear, for example, and it's practically winking at you, tempting you to take a big bite. But hold up, slice it up and toss it in the fryer because this is actually a freaking potato. Could this be some kind of new green cherry? Hmm, take a closer look. Hey, Guinness Book, you better pay attention here because we might have not one but two winners for the smallest apples in the world. As if anyone cared about this record, but whatever. And this lemon? Well, there's no camouflage tricks here. It's just a bizarre lemon living its best life. Arms wide open to the air, ready to be hugged. I mean, squeezed. Ready to be squeezed. After that pointless camouflage lecture, let's dive into a leaf lesson. Don't nod off just yet, all right? We're not discussing heart-shaped leaves or those other basic ones. We're talking anomalies. So, say hello to this skeleton leaf. The green part just pulled a disappearing act. Yep, totally ghosted, just like that Tinder match who ignored all your haze. In both cases, it's just unbelievable. Now, let's talk about a drama queen leaf. It's like those people you have to walk around on eggshells because you need to do literally everything to avoid confrontation. So, I'm pretty sure you understand how desperate this pepper is. It's just trying to get away when deep down it wants to scream, Leave me alone! So bad. Love is like Wi-Fi. It has the power to connect us anywhere. I know this sounds like something a dime a dozen coach would say, but love is cheesy and addicting. At some point, you start to look completely foolish seeing love in every little thing on a daily basis. Want to test if you're feeling that way? Great. So now it's time for the quiz, how in love are you? It's kind of like a psychological test, but, you know, without any actual psychological theory behind it. Check out these trees and tell me, what comes to your mind? To me, they are just bizarre. I can't wrap my head around why that pine tree decided to grow horizontally around the palm tree. But if you're in love, suddenly the whole scene transforms. And these trees remain tangled forever, in a bond stronger than any engagement ring. And what about these two ducks just doing their thing? If you're not in love, well, they are just two ducks. And there's nothing extraordinary going on here besides some occasional quack. But for all you lovebirds out there, these two ducks transform into a bride and groom. Congratulations, I guess. Ha. Huh. Now here's the ultimate test. Check out this photo. Are these just two regular trees, or are they going at it like a couple of love-struck teenagers? As I said, this is the ultimate test, because even I'm thinking, guys, get a room. I mean, trees, get a forest. If you manage to spot plants hugging each other, ducks dressed as a bride and groom, and trees making out, I've got the final results of our quiz. And I have to tell you, my friend, you are madly in love. If you didn't catch any of this stuff, well, I hope you enjoyed the last nature anomalies from our list. So, hey, drop your result in the comments, and don't forget to share this video with your soulmate. Hey, you're running through a vast field at night, as if something is chasing you right now. The light of the full moon brightens your path, and you see a circle of light around it. You run on, looking for a safe shelter. It's not about werewolves, who are said to appear when the moon is full. Soon, this place will be the epicenter of a major storm. This very circle around the moon is called a halo, and ice crystals cause it in the sky. When the moon is full, it reflects a lot of sunlight. These rays then pass to the Earth's surface, but they curve their trajectory and split as they pass through hexagonal ice crystals. As a result, we have a halo of different colors, almost like a rainbow. 
the inner edge of the halo is red and the outer edge is blue. It looks beautiful, but the presence of ice in the clouds means this ice will soon turn into water and begin to fall to the ground. And this rain will be so heavy that you'd better find a shelter beforehand. If the weather is quite warm and the clouds are closer to the ground, you might see a similar phenomenon, a corona. It's much smaller than a halo, but much more colorful. The bluish-white disk on the inside turns brownish-red on the outside. Unlike halo, the corona is made of water droplets. The smaller these drops are, the larger the corona will be. If the water droplets are large, the corona will look like a bright spot the size of the moon itself. Both the corona and halo might also occur during the day when the sun is shining. But be sure to wear sunglasses before just glancing at it, because it's very bright and really bad for your eyes. As soon as you find a shelter, it starts raining heavily. Whoa, what is that? Are you being photographed? No, the flash you just saw is lightning. Bam! Thunder is so strong, the windows in the house start to shake. Here's a tip on how to tell if you're far away from the epicenter of a thunderstorm. When you see lightning, start counting. 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3, and so on. When you hear the thunder, stop counting. Now you have to divide that number by 5. If you can count to 5, it means the epicenter of the thunderstorm is 1 mile away. If you didn't find a shelter before the thunderstorm started and it caught you in the open, leave the high ground immediately. Any mountain or hill is a high-risk area. Don't even think about hiding under a tree. Tall objects are the first target for lightning. Power poles are also at risk. If a thunderstorm catches you riding a bike, drop it immediately and run away. Same if you were riding in a convertible, golf cart, or motorcycle. If a thunderstorm started while you were in an open field, the tallest object here is you. Get down and try to cover yourself somehow. If you're not alone, try to keep your distance from each other. Whew! Now, let's admire the beautiful sunrise. It looks like someone spilled red paint on the sky. This beautiful view means it's about to start raining. You can see a red sky at sunrise because the high-pressure zone has just passed you by and is now followed by a low-pressure zone with high water content in the air. So take an umbrella with you or go back to a warm bed and stay indoors. There's an old saying to keep it all straight. Red sky in the morning, sailor take warning. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Sometimes you can even predict rain by smelling it. It's all about ozone molecules. Storm currents bring ozone down from the upper atmosphere. And when the storm is about to start, you can smell a sense of cleanliness. It's like you just washed the floor with clean water. Your sense of smell gets more sensitive before it starts to rain. It's not because of your nose, but because of the more humid air. Flowers spray their scent, and the water molecules stick to it, spreading it much better. That's why the same flowers smell different when you smell them outside or in a closed, humid greenhouse. Plants can also help you predict changes in weather. If you touch the grass in the morning and it's wet, it means it's going to be a clear day. That morning water on the grass is dew. It appears at the coldest time of night. Clear skies allow the earth to cool a bit, and the water vapor molecules in the air turn into a liquid that settles on various surfaces. Take a closer look at the leaves on the trees. Sometimes they can be upside down. For example, maple leaves respond well to increased humidity before the rain. Their stems become very soft, and the wind can turn them upside down. But the best indicator is pine cones. The seeds are inside the cone, just under its scales. The pine needs to keep them as dry as possible so that the wind can carry the seeds far away and new trees can emerge from them. So when the pine senses rain approaching, it gives the order to close the cones. Then the scales close, protecting the seeds from the water. And instead of boring weather forecast hosts, you can just follow the animals and insects. Have you heard the crickets chirp? That will be your thermometer for today. Set the timer for 15 seconds and count how many times crickets chirp. Add 37 to that number and you get the outdoor temperature value in Fahrenheit degrees. All because air temperature directly affects crickets' metabolism. It can chirp slower and faster depending on how warm it is. So throw away your thermometer and get yourself a little friend. Now, if you don't like insects, look up into the sky for birds. If they're flying high, it'll be a clear and sunny day. But before it rains, air pressure prevents birds from flying high. You may see them flying in flocks very low, most likely looking for shelter. So even if the sky is clear, air pressure tells you that rain is coming. 
If you live near a river or lake, you can hear toad singing, although you can't quite make out the lyrics because it's in toad. They are especially loud before it rains hard. Toads, in general, love wet weather, so they just get excited. Rain is also the best time for females to lay eggs, so they scream loudly in search of a guy to wed. Ow! A mosquito has just bitten you. If mosquitoes are being especially aggressive, you better find a shelter fast. The insects are just trying to eat more before they have to starve during the storm. Also, the warm, humid air makes us sweat more, and we become even more attractive to mosquitoes. Insects also gather in swarms before a thunderstorm. They love the moisture in the air and start circling in a dance. But then they vanish into thin air. It means you have one hour left before heavy rain starts. To predict the weather for the next day, you need to watch the bees. If it rains tomorrow, the bees work overtime. They're pollinating flowers actively because they know they won't be able to leave the hive the next day because of the rain. Squirrels can predict the weather for the whole season. They usually stock up on food for the cold times. And if they start doing it early, it's going to be a tough winter. You can see squirrels running around looking for acorns. They hide them in the ground and run to find the next one. The squirrels often forget where they hid the food. These acorns turn into little sprouts, so we have many new trees, all thanks to squirrels. Animals can also predict disasters like earthquakes. Scientists once did a study in an area with frequent earthquakes in Europe. They put trackers on cows, dogs, and sheep. About 18,000 earthquakes occurred there during that time. Most of them were insignificant, but there were also 12 with a magnitude of 4 on the Richter scale. And each time, before the earthquakes, researchers recorded strange animal behavior. It was as if they were trying to escape from the earthquake zone. Scientists believe animals can sense the ionization of the air before a disaster with their fur. Their good sense of smell also allows them to smell gas. It comes from moving deep underground and then trying to find its way out through small cracks in the surface. The first records of such animal behavior date back to ancient Greece. Cats, rats, snakes, and centipedes left their homes and fled to safety days before a major earthquake hit Greece. Some fish can predict the weather in the area. If sharks hang out near the shore, they're not necessarily looking for food. They may be hiding from a big storm at sea. The worst sign on the coastline is when all the water starts to go back abruptly. You can see the entire shoreline and even the fish and coral that are left on the land. Run away immediately, because soon a huge tsunami wave will come here and wash everything away. Something interesting has recently happened in South Dakota. It was all over the internet, so perhaps you already know about it. In July of 2022, the sky in this state suddenly turned green. So what happened there? Was it caused by a human or by nature? Let's find out. Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. Shortly after a heavy storm, the sky over South Dakota in the U.S. was still overcast. Locals finally went outside and saw that the sky had an intense dark green hue, and they'd never seen anything like that before. People said that it looked like something straight up from science fiction or even a horror movie. Unsurprisingly, South Dakotans immediately started spreading the news all over social media. People shared their beautiful, yet very eerie, pictures on Twitter. They showed the sky over the city of Sioux Falls and a few other towns. Even though it may look like something supernatural, in reality, this is not a terrifying phenomenon at all. It's a simple play of the light and the atmosphere. Something like this happens quite rarely and usually means that really bad weather is approaching. And that's also true to what happened in South Dakota. Just before people started sharing photos, a thunderstorm swept through the town of Sioux Falls. This was confirmed by the U.S. Weather Service. This hurricane was terrible. The wind speed was about 100 miles per hour. According to the Buford Scale on wind speeds, this is the fastest and most destructive storm. There are only 12 numbers on this scale, and the maximum wind strength starts at 73 miles per hour. But why isn't this all over the news then? Well, because it's kind of a usual thing for the residents. Thunderstorms occur very often in the United States, especially in the warmer months. 
And one out of 10 such thunderstorms can become something serious, like a tornado. This one wasn't an exception. It was the so-called Derreco storm. Derreco is very widespread and long-lived. It's actually a combination of a fast-moving group of severe thunderstorms and downpours. People often say that a Derreco is as strong as a tornado. Still, there's a difference between them. A tornado is a vortex, a rotating column of air. It's usually about 500 feet in diameter, although sometimes its width can reach up to 2.5 miles. I don't envy those who would stumble upon that. But the main point is that they rotate. The wind moves very fast in a circle, near some invisible center. A Derreco is a strong thunderstorm, or a system of strong thunderstorms with straight line winds. In other words, it doesn't spin. Instead, the Derreco chooses a point somewhere and simply runs to it, like a very motivated marathon runner. If we compare a Derreco to an ordinary tornado, the latter has six levels of strength, from 40 to 380 miles per hour. So a Derreco is kind of like a small, average level one to two tornado. Usually its speed is within the range of 73 to 113 miles per hour. And in both cases, they can be accompanied by severe thunderstorms, lightning, and rain. But still, these are different things. A storm becomes a Derreco if the damage trail left by it exceeds 240 miles and if the wind speed is at least 58 miles per hour. It's quite difficult to predict. It can form even on a clear day when meteorologists don't even anticipate any storms. And then the winds appear suddenly. It's so surprising that they may even feel explosive. But the National Weather Service tries to warn people at least half an hour or an hour before this happens so that residents have time to prepare and hide. It wasn't any different this time. The storm swept through almost all of South Dakota, as well as the states of Minnesota and Iowa. The consequences were quite serious. More than 30,000 people were left without electricity. Fortunately, people were fine. That's because the locals are pretty used to Derecos. However, the green sky is something different. It became a very unusual sight for the locals. Everyone was wondering why it happened. Was it a bad sign or a normal weather phenomenon? Well, to be honest, scientists don't have an exact explanation. But although there are only assumptions, they sound pretty convincing. A green sky is a very rare phenomenon. Most scientists think that this happens when a powerful storm approaches the area before sunset or sunrise. Then the sky will turn green in this area. NBC meteorologist Bill Cairns, who once faced a similar event himself, suggests that the green sky appeared because of the huge hail before the storm. First, let's talk about why the sky looks blue or any other shade, depending on its mood. In short, the sun simultaneously carries all the rays of the color spectrum. It may seem white to us in total, but it actually has all the colors at the same time. However, these color waves all have different lengths. For example, blue rays are shorter than the other ones. They jump away from the air molecules better than the red waves, so they reach us faster. Because of this, on a regular clear day, the sky seems blue. At the same time, red and orange color waves are very long and move slower, so they're usually left behind. But when the sun goes below the horizon or rises, the rays' directions change, and these waves reach us better. It all means that even if the sunrises and sunsets seem red and orange to us, in fact, there are still blue and green waves among them, but they have to bounce off something to reach us faster and become stronger than the red rays. Have you guessed what I'm getting at? This is where the water comes into play. Clouds are made up of water droplets. When they become large enough, but don't fall yet, for example, due to strong winds, 
they affect how the light behaves in the sky. Large, heavy storms mostly consist of water and hail. And water reflects blue and green rays best of all. That's exactly the reason why the water in rivers and lakes seems bluish-green to us. Although in reality, it's transparent. And yeah, algae matter too. So, there are a couple of key factors why the sky may turn green. First off, the sun should be at the horizon level. Another factor is that while the storm clouds are approaching, they shouldn't cover the sky completely. There still must be a little room for the sun rays. Then, barely noticeable blue rays jump up to storm clouds. They're repelled by water droplets and hail. Mixing with the red sunset, they turn into a bright green light. And this green light is spreading all over the sky. That's why in most of these cases, when the sky turns green, people can only see it in the evenings. Yeah, it can also happen in the middle of the day. But since the conditions are already quite specific, seeing something like that during the day is even rarer. Still, if you see a green sky, you don't need to panic. It doesn't necessarily mean that a terrible storm is approaching. The chances are high though, but still, it's not a rule. It can be just heavy rain or a heavy hail. In other words, if you see a green sky, then you'd better hide and hide your car. However, if you were lucky enough to see the stunning sky from the comfort of your own home, it's indeed very exciting. If you get a glimpse of something like that, just know that you had a chance to experience something very rare and special. Some people said it was the most incredible thing they had ever seen. Ah, beautiful. You're walking with your friend and look up at the sky. The sun looks a bit different today, like it has some kind of ring around it, a rainbow type thing. Huh? Hey, look at that! Your friend pulls his head up out of his phone. You shouldn't look directly into the stop everything, he says. It's a sun halo. We need to find shelter now, unless you have the world's biggest umbrella on you. A sun's halo is nature's sign that there's a snow or rainstorm on its way. It's caused by clouds that are made of bazillions of small ice crystals flying around 20,000 feet. Sunlight goes through those crystals, which causes the light to split and refract, like when there's a rainbow. Now, don't look at the sun halo directly. It's going to be tempting because it's not something you see every day. Plus, it's really beautiful. But ultraviolet light can burn the exposed tissue of your retina and cause serious damage. So, not worth it. Grab some sunglasses, and you're good to go. This phenomenon lasts about 40 minutes. These clouds are the same ones that can cause a spooky ring around the moon at night sometimes. Nature sends early signs of disasters in many ways. J-shaped trees means there's a landslide coming. Since the ground is moving slowly, the trees grow into the super selfieable shape. Try to find a flat area and avoid going near any trees, unless you have superhuman strength. You're on a nice walk on the beach. Sand, sun, not a cloud in the sky. Then, out of nowhere, you see the ocean going back away from the shore. Suddenly, you can even see bits of coral, small fish, and other random small sea animals. That's a good sign to leave. There might be a tsunami on the way. A tsunami is formed when there's an earthquake underwater, and it can hit the coast at 500 miles per hour. It's mostly a Pacific Ocean thing, but why risk it? If there's a channel of choppy water on the beach, stay away. There might be a rip current under the surface that can be extremely dangerous. Sometimes, waves hit the shore in a weird way, which forms these rip currents. You might see a strange gap in the waves. Or you might notice random bits of seaweed going in all different directions. If you don't ever find yourself caught in a rip current, try to stay afloat and don't waste your energy swimming against the current. Yell out for help and try to float your way along the beach. Once you break out of the channel, swim diagonally to the shore. If you find yourself in the ocean and see a group of sharks swimming, okay, this scenario doesn't sound good either way. Well, the good news is they're not necessarily coming for you. The bad news? 
The sharks might be trying to escape from a huge tropical storm or even a hurricane. Sharks can sense these things, so when nature gets angry, they group together and swim deep under the surface to get to safety. You probably shouldn't follow them. Good luck! The golden rule since ancient times, follow the animals. Insects, rats, and snakes leave their homes a couple of days before really big earthquakes. Scientists can't track or really explain how they know it's coming. It seems animals really can sense earthquakes. Maybe because they feel those smaller initial shock waves that we don't even notice. What if you see animals running towards you? Well, that could mean you're about to get eaten for breakfast. Or it means there's a wildfire behind them. Amphibians like frogs, toads, and salamanders try to protect themselves by burrowing down into the ground. Others just run. Before you start running alongside them, check to see if you can see smoke. You don't want to sprint flat out for nothing. Well, it's not just animals. We can spot warning signs, too. For example, if you notice your hair suddenly starts to stand on end and your jewelry starts to buzz, take shelter right away. Lightning might be about to strike somewhere nearby. If you're outside and can't run into a house, make sure not to stand near any tall structures. Lie flat on the ground. Be near water. Seek shelter under an isolated tree or stand in an open space. And don't stand on top of the Empire State Building. That thing gets zapped hundreds of times a year. Do you like skiing? It's all fun and games until all you can see is white. Avalanches can move up to 80 miles an hour. So watch for some warning signs. Does it feel hollow when you walk in the snow? Are there cracks around your feet? Can you see a huge avalanche coming? Time to go! Sometimes a storm mixes its blue light with the red light from the sun, and you get a pretty impressive green. Enjoy it from a safe distance, preferably indoors. This super tall thundercloud usually means you're about to get smashed by hail, or worse, a tornado. Find cover somewhere, like in an underground parking lot or a basement. It might be a bit embarrassing if you're wrong, though. Okay, we know volcanoes can be dangerous. But the lakes near them? Is anything not a sign of danger? Lakes that are near something boiling hot that never cools, so volcanoes, are like wildly shaken soda cans just about to burst. The magma that's underground actually pushes carbon dioxide into the bottom of the lake, and that gas stays there, waiting. Then, even something boring like rain can disturb the lake a little too much and bam! Or boom! (laughs) You get the picture. Diving, swimming, snorkeling, the sea can be amazing, but it's pretty unpredictable. When two wave currents run into each other, they can create a cross sea. It looks pretty cool from far away, but it can be really dangerous for swimmers, surfers, or even ships. There's a strong current roaming around under the surface. You're walking on the beach, apparently every good story starts like this, and all of a sudden, woo, a cave! How cool is this? You should probably go in there, explore a bit, and no. If there's a full moon out, you might not be able to get out of that cave. A full moon affects the tide and makes it lower than usual. That cave might be more accessible, but instead of an exciting adventure, you could end up trapped in there until the next full moon. Bring a big lunch. A wall cloud is one of those things you're both excited and scared to see. Scared because you don't know what it is. Excited because, well, how often do you see something like that? Whatever you feel, tell your legs to start running. During a thunderstorm, these wall clouds sit lower than anything else and can be up to 5 miles long. And if they start spinning, well, Dorothy ended up in Oz. Who knows where you'll end up? It's 2009 in Italy. A man was hanging out in his kitchen. Then he saw some flickering lights. He knew just what to do. He moved his family to a safe place. A couple of seconds later, a massive earthquake hit the whole region. His family survived thanks to his quick reaction. He knew these flickering lights were actually a sign of an upcoming earthquake. People have been seeing these mysterious lights for ages. Some thought it was some kind of sign coming from space. Scientists never used to take them seriously. But after the invention of photography, more and more evidence of these strange lights appeared. 
Soon, they realize the connection. The lights appear, and pretty soon, the earthquake hits. After a bit of digging around, they actually found some records of these earthquake lights from hundreds of years ago. There were bluish flames coming out of the ground right before an earthquake. Ooh, creepy. Oh, ocean, come on, not you again. Okay, but just one more. If you see the oceans turned all reddish-brown, don't go in the water or anywhere near it. This red tide is caused by toxic algae and is something you can find all over the world. That toxic algae can be there even if the ocean's a normal color. Getting that stuff all over you can cause some health issues. Rinse yourself off in fresh water as fast as you can. You know, they even wrote a holiday song about it. Algae home for Christmas. No, really. <laughs>